Okay, so now that we understand what a what one to one function is, every y can only have one x. If we know that a function is one to one, then we know that the function has an inverse. And to denote that a function is the inverse of another function, we use the notation like this. And this does not mean f to the negative first power. This is red, the inverse of function f. So again, we don't read that as f to the negative first power. We read it as the inverse of f. So the inverse function consists of all the ordered pairs such that So if we have the inverse, for, so what this is saying is that if we have a function and the function has the ordered pair x comma y, so for example, 3, 2, then we know that the inverse function has the same numbers but switched around. So if this was the points for function f, we would know that the inverse function has 2, 3 as an ordered pair. So in other words, the points, um, the x and the y values are switched around. Therefore, the domain of a function is the range for the inverse function. And the range for a function f is the domain of the inverse. So they switch everything around. So, for example, if we have a function here with those points, the inverse function is going to have the following points. So instead of 0, 1, it will have 1, 0 in its set. Instead of 1, 2, it will have 2, 1. Instead of 2, 3, it would have the point 3, 2. And instead of 3, 4, it would have the point 4, 3. So now we're going to learn how to find the inverse of a function. So the first step is we're going to replace, if it has f of x, f of x is the same thing we can think of it as y. So we're going to replace it with y. So if we take a look at example 9, we're going to rewrite it as y equals 2x minus 6. Then the second step is we're going to interchange, or you could put the word switch. So we're going to switch the x and y. So instead of y, we're going to put an x there. Instead of x here, we're going to put a y. So we just switch them. Then step three is we're going to solve the equation for y. So we want to take this equation right here and get the y by itself. So we want to get this y, this term by itself. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and add six to both sides. And then the very last step to get this by itself, we always divide, so we're going to divide both sides by 2. So now we have the y by itself. So our last step, step 4, is we're going to replace the y with the notation that represents its, the inverse function. So our final answer is... The inverse function is x plus 6 over 2. So let's make sure this makes sense. Like, why is that the inverse function? So we started off with f of x equals 2x minus 6. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a random number. You can pick whatever number you want. I'm going to go with, let's see, so I'm going to have x be 8. So if I plug in an 8 here, I get a y value of 10. So in other words, when x is 8, y is 10. 
So this is the answer we got from the previous problem. If this is truly the inverse, then I should be able to switch these two numbers around, and this point here should work into the equation. So let's check it. So if I take x and I plug in a 10 and simplify this, 10 plus 6 is 16 divided by 2 is 8. So this shows that an inverse function of a, so the function gives us the point 8, 10, and its inverse function switches the x and the y around. So let's try another example here. So we want to find the inverse here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and write it as y equals instead of f of x. Then the next step is we're going to go ahead and switch the x and the y around. Okay, now we need to solve this equation now that we've switched the x and the y around. We need to solve it for y. So in previous chapters, we've learned that if we don't want, once this is isolated, if we don't want this cube there, then we need to cube root both sides. So we're going to go ahead and cube root both sides. And then this is going to cancel. And again, we want to get this y by itself here. So to get that y by itself, then we're going to subtract 1. So we now have the y by itself. And so the inverse function is the cube root of x minus 1. And we, remember, we could also write that as negative 1 plus the cube root of x. It's the same thing if we just put the negative one first and then the cube root afterwards. So let's see if we if this makes sense. So let's check another problem here. So I'm going to take my original function and I'm going to pick a random number. I'm going to go with 8. So if I plug in an 8 for x, I would have 9 to the third power which is 729. So when x is 8, we get 729 for y. So if this is correct, if we did our work correct, then when we plug in 729 for x, we should get y, an eight, 8 for y. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in 729. And now we're going to evaluate this. So if you put this in your calculator, the cube root of 729, so that means what times itself 3 times is 729? That would be 9. And then 9 minus 1 is 8. All right, example 12. So let's go ahead and find the inverse. So we're going to go ahead and switch the x and the y around. We want to get the y by itself, so we're going to subtract 1. And now to get this y, we're getting closer to getting the y by itself. We need to divide here to get rid of what's in front of it. And then we learned in previous chapters, if it has an exponent and we don't want the exponent there and it's isolated, we're going to cube root both sides and that will cancel that out. And whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So we now have the y by itself. So the inverse function is the cube root of x minus 1 over 8. Okay, let's try example 13. So we're going to go ahead and switch the x and the y. And we need to solve for y. 
So we have a fraction, and we've learned in Chapter 7, if we don't want fractions and we want to get the fraction away, that we need to multiply everything by the common denominator, which is y plus 3. So we're going to multiply both sides by y plus 3. And when we do that, it's going to cancel out there. It's going to cross-cancel there. And that leaves us with just 15 on the right side. And then over here, we're going to have y plus 3 and an x. So we need to simplify that by distributing. And remember, we want to get y by itself. Now it's over here. So we're going to go ahead and subtract 3x. And then lastly, to get rid of something that's right next to it that we don't want next to the y, we're going to divide. So that gives us y equals 15 minus 3x over x. And remember that is the same thing as negative 3x plus 15 over x. So writing it in our um, inverse notation here. We get this for our inverse. All right, example 14, last one here. So we're going to go ahead and switch the x and the y. And our goal is to get the y by itself, so we're going to go ahead and add 9. And then again, to get the y by itself, we don't want the number right next to it there. We're going to divide. And now we have the y by itself. So putting it in our correct notation, the inverse of function f is x plus 9 over 5.